live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Informatica World 2018. Brought to you by Informatica. Hey, welcome Shindels. back everyone. We're live here in Las Vegas at the Venetian. This is Informatica World 2018. It's theCUBE's exclusive coverage. I'm John Furrier, co-host of theCUBE with Peter Burst, my co-host for the past two days. Wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Our next two guests is Rowan Schwartz, SVP, Senior Vice President, General Manager, Big Data Cloud and Data Integration for Informatica. And John McIntyre, who's the Product Management for Azure SQL Data Warehouse with Microsoft. Part of the big news this morning on the keynote is the relationship between Microsoft Azure Cloud and Informatica. Welcome back, welcome to theCUBE. Yeah, it's good to be here. On. So great to have you guys on. We're looking forward to this interview all, all, all morning, all day. Uh, we heard about the rumor of the news. Um, let's jump into it, but I want you to highlight the relationship, how you guys got here, because it's not just news, it's not just an announcement. There's actually code shipping, product integration, push button, console, it's cloud, it's real cloud, yeah, yeah, it's absolutely. hybrid cloud, it's, the, it's a real product. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely, this is correct, and uh, I do want to encourage uh, the audience to actually go directly to the uh, Azure environment, try SQL Data Warehouse, and try to load as much data as possible, uh, leveraging Informatica Intelligent Cloud Services. It is, as you said, available today. Okay, so explain the product. So you got the um, Informatica Intelligent Cloud Services on Azure. What is the specific product? What is, take us through specifically what's happening, and what is the impact to customers? Um, so if, if you're a customer and you're looking to get agility, you want to get scale, you want to enjoy the benefits of cloud data warehouse, one of the first barriers that you have is how do I get my data into this new amazing capabilities that I can achieve in the cloud? And I think with this announcement we're simplifying that process and making it really streamlined. From within the, the same place that you start your new data warehouse, in one click you're actually coming to the strongest IPES that exists in the market and you're able to choose your data source and actually decide what data do you want to move and then in a very simple process move that data into, uh, into Azure SQL Data Warehouse. John, talk about the ease of use, because one of the things that, that pops in my head when I think about data is, man, it's a pain in the butt, I got to do all this stuff, yeah. I got to get it off a storage drive, I got to yeah. upload it, I got to send it on a drive, FedEx the drive, whatever. Cloud has to be yeah. console based. Yeah. Talk about that aspect of this deal. Well, I, I think, John, you know, one of the things that, that you'll hear from Microsoft is that we want to build the most productive cloud available for customers. And when we look at what Rohan was saying, Ronan was saying, excuse me, we move data, how do we get data connected into the Azure cloud and how do we do that in a push button way? And so what you'll see through the integration that we've done is that all the way through single sign-on, that you can just push a button, build that pipeline, get that data flowing from your on-premises environment and get that into the Azure SQL Data Warehouse with just pushing a few buttons. And so what we see is customers are able to really accelerate their migration and movement to the cloud through that productivity. And how long has it been in the works for? You guys just didn't meet yesterday and did product integration. Talk about the relationship with Informatica. Yeah, I mean, we've been working with Informatica for, for years. Um, Informatica has been a great partner. Uh, and, and so we started working on this integration, I think probably over a year ago, uh, and really envisioning what we could do for customers. How do we take all of the great capabilities that Informatica brings to customers and connect those to the Azure cloud. One of the things that we believe for customers is that customers will live in a hybrid world, at least for some foreseeable time. And so how do we enable customers to live in that world, to have their data spread across that world and get all the lineage, governance, and data management capabilities that you need as an enterprise in this world? And that's one of the great things that Informatica brings to the table here. And Microsoft, your ethos too is also your, it seems to me, and you can confirm this if, if it's true or not, to be open for data portability. Certainly yeah. GDPR Absolutely. has a, certainly a huge signal yeah. to the market that, look at, no one's going to fool around with this. Data's yeah. at the center yeah. of the value proposition. Yeah. It I, has to move around. That's right, I, and, and so when we think about data, um, data interoperability, data portability, uh, recently we introduced Azure Databricks as a GA service on Azure, and so we've already done data interoperability across our relational data warehouse products as well as the Databricks products, so Spark and Spark Run times that can interoperate and have data access with the relational warehouse and the re relational warehouse can load into Spark clusters and so we see 
see this giving customers the freedom to move their data and have their data in places that they need them as critical for them to be successful. Ronan, just let me just get specific on the news here for a second. The product is GA or preview or? The product, the product is uh, in preview and it will be uh, fully GA'd in, uh, in the in the end, in in the Q3 time frame, some hopefully uh, the middle toward the end of uh, of Q3, um, customer can start uh, experiencing with the product uh, today, and they will actually see us adding more and more capabilities to this experience even before the GA. What are some of the things that the customers have been asked for? I know you guys do a lot of work on the product side with customers, so I want to ask kind of like the requirements that you guys put together on the defining this product. What were some of the things that were their pain points that you're solving? Was it the ease of use? Was it the the part of the plan of enterprise cataloging. Where did you guys come down when you did your PRDs or your, your requirements and all this stuff? Um, so we've been working uh, with, uh, with customers and with partners um, for the last few years over their journey to adopt cloud. And I think uh, w what we've seen is part of the challenges of adopting cloud was where do I start? How do I figure out what data should I move to the cloud first? What is actually going to be impacted by me doing this? One impact you touch, which is security and privacy. Am I putting something in risk? Am I, am I following the company policies? But other things is like, what other system are depending on this data to exist here? And so on, when I move to the cloud, I'm actually changing my overall um, enterprise data, data architecture. Where Informatica have been focusing, especially with the new catalog capabilities, is on really giving the enterprise a full picture of, of the data. If data is the most important asset that you have, we're actually trying to map it for you, including impact analysis, including relationship and dependencies. What we're trying to simplify is actually choosing the right data to move to the cloud and actually dealing with the rest of the impact that is happening when you are adopting cloud fast. I think cloud is bringing an amazing premise. We want to make it really, really easy. This latest announcement is actually touching the experience itself. How can a customer go from starting a new data warehouse to bringing the data, the data to the data warehouse? I think we are now making it even simpler than ever before. So one of the challenges that enterprises have overall is that there's so few people who really understand how to build these pipelines, how to administer these pipelines. Data scientists are not, you know, they're not, the numbers are not growing fast. Uh, Microsoft also has an enormously powerful ecosystem itself. Do you anticipate that by doing IICS in this relationship way that your developers can actually start incorporating higher, more complex, uh, uh, more higher value data services in a simple way so that yeah. they can start putting it into their applications and reduce the need for those really smart people at large and small companies? I, I mean, I think what we want to get to is this notion of, of self-service data. And to Ronan's point, like, but that data has to be governed, that data has to be protected. You need to know that you can trust that data, you can trust the source of that data, <clears throat> excuse me, you know that you can make decisions from that data, but what we hear from customers is they really want IT and these specialists to get out of the way of the business. And so they want to enable their workforce to actually do data production, to say, I can create a data set that I can actually make decisions around. I know the lineage of that data set, I know the quality of that data set, and I know where it's appropriate to go use that data set. It could be for data science, it could be for a data engineer to go pick up and use for another pipeline, or it could be for a business analyst. But I think with this partnership, what we're really focusing on is how do we accelerate that productivity for those people who are, are discovering the data, managing the data, and then those that can then build these data streams and build these data sets that can be consumed inside an organization. And I think to your point, once we do that, we believe that we'll see a proliferation of analysis and higher level advanced analytics on top of that data. What we're hear, hearing from customers is, the challenge isn't necessarily you know, getting machine learning services up and running or doing uh, advanced analytics or building models and training models. Yes, there is a, a narrow set of people that go and do that, but inordinately what we hear is that customers are spending the bulk of their time shaping, managing that data, wrangling that data, getting that data in a form that it can actually be consumed. And I think this a lot partnership- of prep work. Yeah, a ton, ton of prep work. Talk about the dynamic, we've been hearing on theCUBE here certainly and also out in the industry that 80% of the time spent managing all this stuff. You guys have a value proposition of 
capturing all the metadata so you can get a clear view. And customers, we had uh, Toyota on earlier said, we didn't even, we had all the data, but we just actually made all these mistakes because we didn't connect it all. What you guys are doing, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're going to bring all the Microsoft tools to the table now, so I'm a customer. The benefit to me is, I get to leverage the Power BI stuff or yep. whatever's coming down the pipe, yep. whatever tools you have in your ecosystem on-prem and also in the cloud, is that? Absolutely, and so things like Power Apps and the ability with no-code, low-code experiences to actually go build intelligent applications, build things like uh, sales-oriented applications, recruiting-oriented applications, and leverage that data, that is really what we want to unlock for enterprises and for you know, data professionals. What do you think the time will be, just ballpark, ballpark order of magnitude, time to, to that you're going to save on the, the setup? If 80% is kind of like a, just say industry benchmark, people throwing around, but say 80% is wrangling setup, 20% analysis, mm -hmm. where do you guys see the impact with something like the uh, intelligent uh, service, cloud service with Azure? I, I mean, Ronan, you can speak to what you're seeing already from some of the customers, but I, I think even from what we saw this morning in the keynote, I mean, we're cutting down the time dramatically in terms of, from identifying what data has value and then actually getting that moving into Azure. What you saw in less than 10 minutes today you know, would take days, if not weeks, to actually get done so without these tools. So significant number, big yeah, number. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think um, th there are actually two parts to, uh, to people uh, going through the adoption. One is the technology of moving the data, but the other one that is even, uh, I think, a bigger barrier and sometimes uh, even more important is, can I actually just discover and identify the data and can I actually get all the metadata needed so that I can get the approval or I can get my personally comfortable with the data that I'm choosing. I think this cost is actually being now eliminated and that is actually going to allow more people to consume more data even faster, but I, I, I do agree that I, I think <laughs> the demo speaks better than anything else. Yeah, got a lot of clicks good, and you're there. Got some great props on Twitter, so some great tweets. <laughs> the question that begs next is we, now that I got a pipeline and kind of automating all this stuff's going on, you know, console based, uh, you know, cataloging all this great stuff. AI, machine learning involved, where is there any, did you guys put these, the secret sauce in some of the, uh, the tech? I mean, is that, can you share uh, what's under the hood at all? <laughs> or is that the secret sauce? <laughs> so um, I cannot steal some of the demos of tomorrow, but I think yes, you, you will. Can. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> tell us. <laughs> but I think you will see uh, an interesting uh, AI-driven interface from, yes. uh, from Microsoft working <laughs> very interestingly with, uh, with the catalog to drive intelligence yeah. to the users. So we will definitely demo it tomorrow so that's a yes. on stage. Yes, so there's a yes, there. yes. But But I want to build on this because uh, I asked a question about whether or not developers are going to get access to this. If I, have, if I have a platform that allows me to build very, very complex, but ri very rich in a simple way, pipelines to data, I have a catalog that allows me to discover data, sustain knowledge about that data over as the data changes over time, and I have a very simple way of setting that up and running it through an Azure Cloud experience. Can I anticipate that over time, certain conventions for how data gets established, gets set up, organized, formats, all that other stuff, starts to emerge as a combination of this partnership so the developers can go into an account and say, okay, so we're going to do this for you. Oh, you have customer data, you have this data. You, I want to be able to grab that and make it part of my application. Yeah. Isn't, isn't that where this kind of goes over time? Yes, yes, in a, a very substantive way. I mean, I, I think we're also looking at from, you'll have to stay tuned on the Microsoft side, but we're working towards looking at uh, data entities, business entities, um, and how do we enrich those entities, and to your point, where, where do they get enriched in that data pipeline, and then how do they get consumed, and how do they get consumed in a way uh, where we're expressing uh, the data model, the schema, the lineage, and all of these things in a way that's very discoverable for those consuming that data, so they understand where it's coming from, so that people, and, and so we look at this partnership in terms of getting that data, getting that data more enriched, and getting that data more consumable in a standard way for application developers. Again, it, it could be those building intelligent applications, sure. uh, it could be those building business applications, and there's, there's a whole set of Or some things. as yet undefined class of applications Absolutely. that are made possible because it's easier to find the data, 
acknowledge the data, yeah. use the data. Yeah, absolutely. If we had more time, I would love to drill down on the future with microservices, containers, Kubernetes, mm -hmm. all the cool stuff that's going on around cloud native. Yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of headroom there yeah. from a developer standpoint. Final question is um, extending the partnership. In the, is there a go to market together? Are you guys taking it to the field? What's the relationship with uh, uh, Microsoft, your ecosystem, your developers, your customers, and Informatica? Yeah, I mean, we're doing a lot of joint go-to-market today already. We've been doing a lot all the way up to this announcement. Um, and I think you'll, you'll see that increase uh, based on this announce announcement. Um, I don't know if Ron, you want to talk yeah, about specific I, I, things we're doing. Yeah, I think uh, the success with the customer is already there. And uh, there is actually a really nice list of customers here that are a mutual customer of ours doing exactly these scenarios will make it easier for them to do it uh, from now on. Yeah. From a go-to-market perspective, we have a, a, a really nice uh, go-to-market uh, motion where the sales teams are actually getting aligned. The, the new visible integration will make it even easier for yeah. them. I mean, this really hits a lot of the sweet spot, multi-cloud, hybrid cloud, mm -hmm. truly data-driven. Ease of use, getting up and up and running. Congratulations, Ronan, great job. John, great to see you. Here inside theCUBE, putting all the data, packing it up, sharing it out over the airwaves and all over the internet. This is theCUBE, I'm John Furrier. Peter Burris, thanks for watching. We'll be back with more live coverage. Stay with us for more coverage here at Informatica World 2018, live in Las Vegas. We'll be right back. <laughs>